morning, good morning. Let you all get logged on. going on y'all I don't know if you all saw I did post something on Facebook <laughs> and it feels accurate to me this morning it said uh, it says experts say we may be nearing the end of the last age the next age that we are entering into is provisionally being called March uh, April Jeez, <laughs> April and may also last another 10 to 20 million years um, so congratulations. We, uh, I feel like we should get the t-shirts printed up to say, I survived March, 2020. Um, so far so good. So, and here we still are still hanging out and doing prayer a couple weeks later. So we prayed our way through one, what feels like a millennia. We'll pray ourselves through another. So we're going to get started just a hair earlier today because there are going to be, um, there's some changes as we switch over. So if you're following along, we are continuing to be in at, uh, you can follow along at commonprayer.net. And if you're in the book, um, you're going to want to be turning over to page 222. So we're going to be skipping forward a little bit. Um, as you're paging, you're going to notice that we are, um, that we are skipping past Holy Week. Um, the way the book is set up is that all the Holy Week readings are set up um, at the very beginning of April. Um, and so we will be returning to those next week. Um, but for now, we're simply going to continue with April 1st, um, and we'll go all the way up until this weekend. Also, what you need to know um, is that the readings are going to change a little bit. Um, we're going to continue with the Exodus readings the way they've been. Um, but basically, the Mark readings, with maybe one or two exceptions, has basically kind of come up to the, uh, the crucifixion and resurrection narratives anyway. So we're going to return to those in a week. Um, so for now, we're going to just begin our walking our way through 1 John. And so if you've been following along in your Bible, um, you're free to uh, page over to that. We're going to be out of Mark and into 1 John. We're going to read that up until Holy Week. Um, and then after we finish up with Holy Week, um, we'll return and kind of see where we're at with that. And, uh, and we may want to we may want to not precisely follow the reason. We're going to start 1 John. We may decide if we have to quit about halfway through it, we may decide we want to come back and just finish it off. Um, so we will figure it out. But anyway, we're going to be on page 222 this morning. Um, and it's good to see you this morning. So, I'm going to invite you to quiet your hearts as we prepare to worship our Savior this morning. O Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Our antiphon, our delight is in the law of love, 
May we walk in Christ's light day and night. And this morning, beginning of the month, we are going to read from the beginning of the Psalter. Begin, uh, it's chapter 1, reading verses 1 through 3 and chapter 6. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seat of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Our delight is in the law of love. May we walk in Christ's light day and night. Our first reading for this morning is from Exodus chapter 14. And if you'll permit me a bit of commentary, we finally get into the good stuff. So today we get to cross the Red Sea. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, the minds of Pharaoh and his officials were changed towards the people. And they said, what have we done letting Israel leave our service? So he had his chariot made ready and took his army with him. He took 600 picked chariots and all the other chariots of Egypt with officers over all of them. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued the Israelites who were going out boldly. The Egyptians pursued them, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots, his chariot drivers and his army. They overtook them camped by the sea, by Peharioth in front of Baal Zephon. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us? bringing us out of Egypt. Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, stand firm, and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his armies, his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh his chariots, and his chariot drivers. The angel of God who was going before the Israelite army moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night, and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. This is the word of the Lord. And as we said before, our New Testament re lesson for today is from 1 John, beginning in chapter 1. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, 
so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. This is the word of the Lord. Returning to our antiphon. Our delight is in the law of love. May we walk in Christ's light day and night. Our reflection for today comes from a perhaps a somewhat unexpected source. Of course, it is April 1, April Fool's Day, and so we'll be reading from American humorist Garrison Keillor, who said, Some people think it is difficult to be a Christian and to laugh, but I think it's the other way around. God writes a lot of comedy. It's just that he has so many bad actors. Again, some people think it is difficult to be a Christian and to laugh, but I think it's the other way around. God writes a lot of comedy. It's just that he has so many bad actors. Friends, we're going to enter into a time of prayer, as we always do. Um, as usual, you can submit your prayer requests at stmarysucc.org. We'll continue to pray through the list um, as we've been given it. Our Father in heaven, we've had the privilege of reading through this Exodus story and to see that it's more than just a miracle story, that it really is a story of how, of, of how at times unfaithful or uncertain your people can be and how utterly faithful you are in the light of, in the light of pain and of suffering. We've watched you care for your people through plagues. We've watched you care for them as you've given them a meal to share, to remember. And today we watch you care for them as you provide a cloud and a pillar of light to lead them and you protect them from the hand of the Egyptian army. And Lord, at least for me in this moment, I'm struck by this thing that Moses says to everyone. He says, it is the Lord who will fight for you. And Father, that's... that's a message I think we all could use this day. That as we do fight a microscopic enemy and we fear and we feel fear and anxiety around us, Lord, we're doing all that we can to fight against it. And maybe just maybe what we need in this moment is to just breathe deep and know that you are fighting for us, that you are present with us, that you're present with our loved ones, you're present with those who are taking the battle um, to this virus in hospitals and in other places of care. And so, God, remind us this day that you are not a passive God sitting on your throne just watching things unfold, but that you are living and active and involved in our lives and present with us even as we gather here. Lord, may we take confidence and courage from that, the confidence and courage to simply rest, to do that which is in our power to do, and to allow you to do your good and perfect work in our lives and in the world. Lord, trusting in that goodness, trusting that you do work for us, we lift up the request that we've been given for this day. And God, we'd start this day by praying for one of those places where we can and we have made a difference. Lord, it being Wednesday, um, we give thanks today for the Silver Run Food Pantry. And we pray for those who will be working it today in the midst of a pandemic, still doing all that we can to minister to the needs of our loved ones. 
And so, God, we pray that you would keep both workers and clients safe. We pray, God, that, uh, that those who are in need of assistance at this time would come and that we would not just deliver groceries, which are essential, but that we would also deliver a word of hope and a word of encouragement that those who are suffering through this time know that they are not alone and that they are loved and that they have value in your eyes. So God, we lift up the food pantry. We pray um, for Brenda and for all who manage it as they make decisions about what we can and can't do moving forward and what makes them, what makes the most sense. We pray, God, that you would guide it and that you would help us to do the good work that you've called us to do. Lord, we also lift up the names that have been, that have been on our list. We continue to pray for those who mourn, the families of Gail Meckley and of Elaine Anderson. We pray for those who are sick. We think of Ellen and John Hopkins. We pray for our brother, Billy Heath. And we continue to pray for Joe Malauskas. We pray for those who give care. We think this morning of Perry Lyons and his wife, Darlene. We think of, all, we think of healthcare workers and first responders and administrators who are tasked with responding to this virus. We pray for those self-isolating, those who are still awaiting test results, and those who are discovering what to do in light of positive results. And Lord, we do pray for our healthcare workers. We think especially again this morning of Pam Wood, and we ask, oh God, that you would strengthen her and give her courage as she is called to the front lines to care for others. And forgive me, I did see one, um, one more prayer request. Thank you, Belinda. We also pray and give thanks today um, for Belinda's brother, Dave Cunningham, um, who had an all clear on a report from his PET scan. And God, we appreciate that added diagnoses in these times feel so weighty and so heavy. And so we give thanks for the all clear and we celebrate with him and with his family this day. We also ask, oh God, that you would hear the prayers that we lift up to you this morning. Following in the way of Christ, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God, you who led Israel through the waters, plant us by streams of living water. Root us in your love and grow us up to bear the fruit of your spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Amen. Now, my friends, may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen. Friends, as always, it is good to see you this morning. Um, and thank you for continuing to make this a space where we can come and be the church of Jesus Christ. Sometimes I feel like this is, maybe it's because I have a slightly monastic heart, but this feels in so many ways like what our faith is all about, simply being with one another, supporting one another, and praying for one another as best we are able. And so, um, so this, truly has been, this truly continues to be a joy. I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you. Have a wonderful day. We will see you tomorrow morning. Peace and good, my friends.